Dave Barry here alongside National Recruiting Director Adam Gorney. And Adam, you're putting out a two-part series on all 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL and spotlighting those that we saw as high school prospects, specifically at Rivals Camps and at our Rivals Five Star Challenges. 16 of the current starters attended a Rivals event. Pretty impressive. And we're going to break a few of those down. Uh, first of all, let's go way back to Joe Burrow. He attended a Rivals Camp in Cincinnati, of all places, in 2013, and then Columbus in 2014. What do you remember about uh, Joe Burrow seeing him at our? Yeah, Burrow was a mid-three-star quarterback who was basically the second option in Ohio State's class. He you know, threw a nice ball. He was a co very competent quarterback, but honestly, not someone that especially stood out, really shocked us in the way that he performed at camp. Um, and to back that up, you know, the people at Ohio State took him but they weren't necessarily in love with him. I mean, he was JT Barrett's backup. He lost the starting job to Dwayne Haskins. Uh, you know, then coach Urban Meyer famously called him a D2 quarterback and that he threw like a girl. Um, that might have been motivation or it might have been, uh, you know, so, some blunt honesty there. But he developed incredibly well in college, though, once he transferred to LSU. That 2019 season was incredible. He had 60 touchdowns and six picks. But to be fair, he was also throwing to Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Terrace Marshall. Um, you know, at least two of those three, all three are in the NFL. Two of them are two of the best receivers in the league. And Burrow's now playing with Jamar Chase in Cincinnati. So a lot of his development is from the people that he has surrounded himself with. But obviously, you know, at 16 and 17, he was not uh, not what he is today. Yeah. And, and then, now what about Patrick Mahomes? Another guy, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years now, but he was at our Dallas camp back in 2013. What do you remember about him? Yeah, the Patrick Mahomes of today is not the Patrick Mahomes that we saw in 2013. He was part of that 2014 class. He ended up um, as a high level three star, very talent. He had talent. He had a lot of talent. He was a dual threat kid. The number one uh, dual threat that year was Deshaun Watson. Um, who went on to Clemson and then the NFL. But again, Mahomes was a kid that developed later. He was not even 200 pounds in high school. He's now 225 or so. He's thick and muscular now. He was not that way in high school. He honestly looked like a little kid coming out of White House, Texas. And I think that's why his recruitment really stalled. And unless DJ Gillens didn't decommit from Texas Tech, he probably would have ended up at Houston or Rice. Those were the only other schools that had really been recruiting him. Once Gillen's decommitted, then Coach Cliff Kingsbury came in, offered Mahomes, and he and he then became stellar. He developed physically in Lubbock, and then now he's you know arguably the best player in the NFL. But back then, um, this wasn't necessarily a miss. I mean, obviously the ranking doesn't reflect it now, um, but back then no one would have been able to predict what we saw today. No, one thing I do remember, though, about that camp is there was talk about because he was a, a really good baseball player and there was talk that yeah. he, you know, might be an MLB guy in the future. But um, obviously it's worked out well for him. Uh, let's move on to some more recent guys. Mac Jones, we saw so many times he came to I think it was a total of five or six events um, back in 2016. He was at our uh, Rivals Five Star Challenge. He came to camps in 2015 and 2016. Um, he was a very charismatic, super nice to all of us uh, kind of guy. What do you remember about him? Yeah, that's what I do remember about Mac Jones. That picture of him walking out, strutting almost like a WWE wrestler on NFL draft night was really kind of how he carried himself. He was very friendly, very affable, very outgoing. But also, you know, underneath that, there was real competitiveness there. He wasn't the biggest guy. He wasn't the strongest. He didn't look the best on, you know, on the on the field. Um, but he delivered the ball all over the place. Um, he went to Alabama, didn't back down from competition, waited his turn, um, and then as, and is now a starting quarterback uh, for the New England Patriots. So he was in a class where Davis Mills, Hunter Johnson, and Jake Fromm ended up five stars. Um, in many ways, he, he's arguably the best player in that class. Um, and, and has really delivered it, uh, not only not just from style points, but from just being a very competent quarterback who really believes in himself. Yeah. And then moving on to a little bit more recent guy, Trevor Lawrence. We saw him at uh, at our uh, Atlanta camp. 
Uh, and then in 2017 at the five star challenge that took place in Indianapolis. And that was a star studded group, uh, not just at quarterback with Justin Fields was there, but at receiver as well. A lot of a lot of good, good quality players there. What do you remember about Trevor in those camps? Yeah, I remember in the high school days, um, you know, Justin Fields felt like he was the number one quarterback in the country. And he was right there. I mean, any other year, if not for Trevor Lawrence at the top, he would have been uh, he would have been that guy. Now Trevor's going into his third year in the NFL, really starting to get him get itself under him. Um, now there's coaching stability in Jacksonville. But even back then, what I remember most about Trevor Lawrence was uh, just the way he carried himself. He, he carried himself like uh, not cocky at all, but bigger than you know being a high school quarterback. He was trying to prepare for college. Uh, when he was in high school, he's six, five, 200 pounds as a high schooler. There was always rumors that he had silently committed to Georgia. I never really necessarily believed that uh, he didn't love the recruiting game, um, but he was always around to do interviews, always a friendly kid, a great guy. Um, and then threw wonderful balls all over the field. Like his arm strength was unbelievable. There have been Peyton Manning comparisons. We'll see if that kind of pans out that that those are you know really basically the best quarterbacks to ever play the game um, but Trevor Lawrence is becoming one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL and it's no surprise I'm really happy we kept him at number one although Justin Fields was right there fighting for that spot too all right and then we'll finish off with a guy that Carolina fans are excited to see this year Bryce Young uh, we saw him plenty. You knew him well, being uh, a Southern California guy. He attended uh, events in 2018 and, and our five-star challenge in 2019. Um, there are questions even then, you know, about his size and how we should rank him. But what do you remember about Bryce? Yeah, I mean, those questions are lasting till today. And, and I laugh as the NFL draft is going on and then preseason camp and then, you know, hard knocks. And then now he's, he's getting into the season um, those questions had had been around since he was about a seventh grader. Can he ever be a legit, you know, five star level quarterback with his size? And, and you know, my thoughts have evolved on that over the years a lot because of him. But just the way that the position is now played more of a point guard on a football field than having to be this towering figure just standing in the pocket. Um, he is a pocket passer, though. He loves to, you know, deliver the ball. What he does so great is his anticipation is just phenomenal. So he sees things really before they happen. You saw that against, um, you know, SEC competition every week when he was at Alabama. He picked people apart because of his, you know, precision passing, but also because he kind of just had this weird, uncanny feeling for what was about to happen um, a split second before it did and then reacting to it. So his size, you know, we, we determined at the end and after many long talks with his dad, who, you know, absolutely was politicking for him, but in the right way that that he was the, you know, that he ended up the number two player in the country. I really do regret, uh, you know, him not being the number one player in the country because he proved it so many times at Alabama and then, uh, you know, being the number one pick in the NFL draft. Yeah, that's one that we would obviously look at, you know, how things have gone now, we would go back and change for sure. But um, all right, well, let's remind everybody, you can check out Adam's articles on Rivals.com uh, and you can follow him on X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter, which I like to say, uh, at, at, at Adam Gorney. Adam, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Dave.